Good morning, dear students. Let's start the lesson. So today's topic is project analysis. Uh, my name is Shantai Firkin, a teacher of computer science at Asana PHM. Okay, before we start, uh, I would like to introduce why we choose this specific topic, because this topic is related to the course work that students need to write in 12th grade as a part of the final exam. Mm, so project analysis is like part of the course work and it's very, very important part. So let me introduce the lesson objectives for this lesson. So the first one, know the features of system analysis, very important part. Second one, compare different analysis techniques and discuss the trade-offs among them. Number three, uh, develop thinking skills of system and analysis during project work. Number four, use data flow diagrams, we call them DFDs and system flow charts. Analyze problems and evaluate the feasibility of creating computer-based solutions. So why did we choose uh, this kind of lesson objectives? Uh, all they are taken from the lesson, sorry, uh, from the course plan, and all of them are inevitable while you're doing your coursework. Okay, let's carry on. But before we start, I would like to show you the form uh, that you are going to, to use in order to choose your topic or the area that you're going to solve your problem. Okay. Originally, you are given this kind of form. Uh, this, this kind of form was used by students the previous year and this year as well. So what you can see here, uh, students should write your name, the school and the teacher as well. Then you can see here two main things like, the first one is client details, client details and second one is problem statement. The first part, client details, uh, you need to describe your client, uh, the area of chosen subject, of chosen problem, actually the main information about who is the client, what he's dealing with, what kind of business do, uh, does he or she has, uh, etc. Just general information. You just need to write the paragraphs here, just a few sentences but very clear to make the examiner to know uh, what kind of uh, problem and what kind of area does the client is involved in. The second part is a problem statement. Uh, this kind of thing is related uh, deeply to the uh, client's problem, to the client's situation. So, uh, every student client should have a special area and special business, as I said before. So, and this area should have some problem. It doesn't mean that it's a crucial problem, but something is working well, something is working bad. So, this kind of thing you need to describe in here. Just few sentences, but very clear again, uh, so your examiner will know exactly. Why do students need to fill this form? It's very important because it is, uh, happens only at the beginning and uh, it depends on this how you fill this form uh, so your work will develop in the future. So if you fill this form badly poor with just a few words it means that you have no clear idea about what you're going to do and what is your client is involved in. That's why examiners, at the, you can see the bottom, two different options for examiner, approved or not approved. So examiner need to decide uh, will he approve the topic or the area of choosing solution for the student or not. So that's why students need to give a very clear, clear statements about what he's going to do. Okay, and examiner then, uh, after he approves or not approves, choosing these two different options, he should give a small little bit of comments for the student. Uh, for example, uh, how a student can enrich his coursework or solve his problem. And this problem should be appropriate for the grade 12 level. Okay, let's carry on. Now, let's do a little bit practical work. So I'm going to give you uh, some forms that you already used the previous year and this year as well. So, and you need to act like an examiner and what you have to do. First one, you need to decide, will you approve or not approve <coughs> the form that I'll give for you? The second one, how you're going to do this? You need to find and highlight the main arguments uh, in student's form. So you need to find them, highlight and decide uh, are they, do they enough for the, to be approved or not approved. Okay? And the last one, you need to think about examiner's comments. Like, um, if you approve this work, you should uh, claim your statement like why do you approve? Or in other case, if you not approve, you should also give suggestions how student can change and improve his work in order to be improved in the future. Okay, and let's look on the first one. Okay, student, it was previous year, 2014, school is in Asana. Okay, client details. 
when the owner comes to the restaurant in the end of the every month, he needs to count the total expense and income for the month. He has to calculate it on the calculator and write down the data on the paper. Also, he has to find all the papers with the income for the month in each year, which means to find and count about 30 papers with a lot of different numbers. Okay, here are the client details. Okay, and after this we have problem statement uh, that the data is can be easily lost uh, or the whole sheet will be income in one day cannot be counted because here the main problem in the human factor in addition to all the calculation the date of expenditure and revenues for the month takes a very long time so sometimes the owner is forced to stay up late at night to get the data need to take a program that will automatically quickly and accurately calculate an income and expenses for the month and also assume the net profit for the month now please can you decide uh, will you approve or not approve this form and give uh, the original comments okay let's say you have one minute to do this okay for the bidding i think it will be enough time <clears throat> so let's see the right answer so of course this work was approved yep and examiners give original comments so you should write programming routines to perform your calculations Okay, you need to consider what form <coughs> the information needs to be displayed, how long the data should be kept for, and also how summaries could be displayed. For example, month's profits over a year could be displayed as a bar chart. So, reasonable suggestions. And uh, the examiner highlights the key words, uh, like main arguments. So, the data can be easily lost, or the whole sheet with the income in one day cannot be counted. So, this is a real problem. So, student have a clear idea what kind of problem his client has and then he's going to solve this problem and another one revenues for the month takes a very long time so like a summary we can say that um, <coughs> uh, the income cannot be counted and the second one is like it's time consuming these two things uh, makes this work approved and again if you see the last line of this uh, problem statement you can find that need to make a program that will automatically quickly and accurately calculate so students also has a way how he's going to solve this problem. It's also very clear. So student is on the right way. Okay. So now let's look on another example. It doesn't mean that it's a wrong example, but uh, you need to decide again. We should be objectives. Okay. So let's have a look. Okay. Again, the same school. Client details. My client is someone. Maybe he would like to stay anonymous. Who is a work in a little and not so fam famous company. She is teach children and uh, adults also prepare to IELTS test exam company name is Polyglot which is uh, her own business and she created two years ago okay so you can read it by yourself and let's say I give you one minute again to decide will you approve or not okay time was enough now let's have a look at the right answer answer is here so this work was, was not approved this topic um, come and come and examine the decided that is not enough to the 12th grade level so the suggestion was the production of the website where the only interaction by user would be navigation using links is not be sufficient for grade 12 computer science coursework absolutely so here in yellow color we can find this exactly web page is firstly good background and will interested readers interested readers okay I will write your autobiography and in order to achieve all the parents and the students were confident and obtain a good knowledge. So this looks like more like a um, static website because it just gives the general information and uh, just attract people to this company, but nothing about the data processing, etc. So in order to enhance this project or make it like more sufficient for grade 12, students need to use some uh, PHP coding, etc. Because you know that. Later, I will show you on the next slide that the coursework should include also a programming part. But uh, in this case, we can see that uh, no, there is no programming and student is go not going to use some programming structures in his project. This makes uh, this topic and his problem statement not appropriate in this case. But he can uh, easily improve it to make some, uh, to add some like data processing, maybe special filling forms uh, sent to the database etc so especially yes again student change this form and it was done okay now after student finish this form uh, and the answer from the examiner comes student can easily start the project work before he starts let me show the content of this the content is 
yeah, exciting. The first one is definition, investigation, analysis. Definition, nature of the problem, investigation, analysis. Then, again, two parts, investigation, analysis. Then the second part starts, design. Very nice part, the students show their fantasy and impressions. Of, so they show, show how the way how they're going to solve and how it should, looks like on pictures, etc. Then, after they finish design, uh, everything paper, was paper-based, for example, and then they start software development, programming, testing, and installation. That means that students need to do something practical and applicable. What he did in design, he need to create now, okay, in this part. Later, after he finished his uh, application or the program, he starts the part called documentation. It's a user documentation, uh, um, documentation how to use the problem, so everything should be clear in this coursework. And the last one, evaluation, student's own evaluation of his work, uh, like estimating different sites, was it easy or difficult, why something was wrong, why something was okay, uh, did he succeed with all criteria, etc. So self-evaluation, we call it, and uh, the client evaluation as well. So the client should give the response uh, to, the, to the student, to his work in general. Um, and also he tried to be more specific. And then the, this will be the final uh, point on, in this project. Okay. So today our focus is actually on investigation and analysis. If we are going to be more specific analysis, let's follow. So let me show you. The coursework starts with this uh, criteria. The first one is definition. Let me just uh, briefly introduce you uh, which criteria is, going, is given for the mark three maximum points. So students need to give a full description of organization and methods currently in use in the area of chosen project. Uh, it was very similar to the form that I showed you before. With descriptors of the origin of the data to be used and in some indication of the form the data takes. Again, students need to put some evidence of what he did, uh, some evidence of his investigation and some evidence of that he made real interview with the client, etc. So give some uh, printing photos, so any evidence that can <coughs> help him in the coursework. Okay, next part is investigation analysis. This is much more deeper and um, examiner will give this eight point maximum. So let's have a look uh, for what criteria your student will be given eight marks. First of all, it's an external user involvement with detailed recording of users' requirements. It means that uh, students need to do some investigation with the client, some interviews, speaking dialects, uh, maybe some recordings. It depends again on the students um, in his way, which way did he choose to make this investigation. Alternative approaches have been discussed in depth. It's also very important. The report demonstrates a thorough analysis of the system to be computerized. A detailed requirement specification based on the information collected have been produced. Again, if you said in depth, uh, uh, thorough analysis. Today I would like you to show how you make the, your analysis uh, as thorough as possible. Okay. So investigation analysis. You can achieve this using the following methods. Basically we have three of them, but uh, you can, if you find something more, it's excellent, brilliant. So the first one is interview, generally. Interview with a client, interview with a person who will be the main uh, like the person who give you feedback during you make your project. As you know that uh, this project looks like system life cycle and if you uh, be more specific this is like a scrum okay when the client is totally involved not like a waterfall system life cycle uh, your client always comes after end of each stage uh, gives his like feedback um, uh, how he think the project is on the right way or not uh, suggestions and then you can change according to his suggestions. So <clears throat> interview again. If you are talking about this part, like investigation, in this part uh, you need to make a very thorough interview with the client. You should ask about any questions that can help you to find out the main problem and the way of how can you solve the problem. So interview should can be recorded, or you can write it, or in any way, or you make uh, a video, like a. Um, but if you make a record, it may cause a problem. You can say how we can put this record. In the, in the coursework. It's very easy. You can make a transcript of this uh, dialogue of this interview and put it in a Word document. It will be very nice and clear for everyone who is going to read it. Okay, this is the first way. The second is the questionnaire. This is actually used for multiple users. Why? So if interview you can use for one or two person who are the main clients. Questionnaire usually you make if your project related to the 
area there were a lot of people involved. Or you are going to create something for the company which has a lot of workers, or maybe if it's school, you have a lot of students, people who also affects on this project. So you can make it uh, on different uh, tools. For example, SurveyMonkey is like one way that you can do it. Mm, yeah, and then this data will be processed and you'll have the answer. You can analyze your graphics and see what happens and what is the main trend, what is the low trend, etc. And the last one, observation of the current system. Um, actually, you can uh, split this big part, like observation of current system, on other uh, small steps. I'll show you today how you can make it. Okay, so let's carry on and start with interview. So this one uh, was taken from coursework that a student did last previous year. So this is a simple interview with a client. How she did it? Student just uh, take a voice recorder, go, went to your, with your client, make a nice conversation with a cup of tea, and just record this. Yeah, again, it was promised by a client to make this record. Absolutely. And so she put uh, this uh, record in a Word document, like a transcript, and then at the beginning she put the interview with the client will help me to completely picture the whole process and decide what approach to the problem I should use. So students have an idea, and this interview was, take, um, was made with the client. And after this interview, she made analysis. Analysis from client interview. She said that maximum visitors, it was a beauty salon in order to you to know what happens here. The maximum visitors are females, uh, they visit the salon very often, while the number of females that visit the salon are rare twice is smaller than the number of males. So and she makes some decision here, like that female, you can see here is green color, and male is red color. So this is more popular among females. This data was taken from the interview with a client. It's like one possible way. Let's look at another way. Uh, second one is questionnaire. As we said, questionnaire is like more appropriate uh, for multiple users. It's impossible to ask everyone who is involved in the project, but you can make it online, for example, or paper-based, doesn't matter. Just uh, short few questions with a short answers, like yes, no questions, or with several options, and then your data will process automatically and you can find the answer. So here in this example, you can see that the, the main question that was asked to the respondents was, are you satisfied by the quality of the attendance of control for canteen? And second question was, do you believe that this system will help to make your job of tutors easier? So, and then he just analyzed this data. He said, all the respondents are belonging to the age group of 15 to 18, etc., etc., etc. So, as a teacher, I think it's a very useful way uh, to make the course work like very good. Uh, so, for example, for students, it's also very good practice because it's, uh, this research is a part of the coursework, one point. The second point is that uh, later in their future life, they can use this in any research in their university life, etc. So, this resource is very useful. Okay. Observation of current system. Now we reach to this point. As I promised, I, would like to, I said that I would like to split this on several steps. Here they are. First one is flowchart of the current system. So flowcharts, it's very important. Why it's so core important in the project? Because after you analyze the data, after you uh, finish the observation, you need to draw the flowchart because the system has some entities, some processes, some choices, etc. So if you draw this clearly on the paper or on a special software, you have a clear idea what happens and what happens wrong. This will help you absolutely. The second is data flow diagram. As we usually call it DFD, it's very nice thing and show you very detailed the process, each process which happens in the system. And don't forget that it's the current system, not the future. Okay. And the next data capture method: how data is taken to the and where it's saved on the program or on the software that already exists. Next one is inputs and outputs of the system. Here. Uh, uh, students need to not to design, just need to give evidence, like screenshots or writings or photos of the inputs and outputs of the system that works now. Next, students need to discuss alternative solutions, how he can solve the problem in different ways, not only one specific way, but several ways. 
software and hardware requirements. Again, it's also very important because well, as soon as you finish alternative solutions, you have an idea the way how you're going to solve and you need to choose the packages, software packages and hardware requirements that will need you uh, to finish the project and to solve the problem. Okay. So flowcharts. Uh, this is, is one example of flowchart. And this looks like a brain uh, has a branching structures and also linear structures, but not cycles. But it's actually uh, enough. It depends again on the client system. So here you can see that uh, this was done for the system that ran the flags, I think. Yeah. So students has a choice, three different flags, and then the client, after he came to the system, he needed to decide or uh, yep should uh, choose different options or not. So. Let's carry on. Second flowchart. It's about a, a cinema, I think, where the client can choose a new ticket or a special movie, etc., to the place in the cinema. So these two examples, this one and this one, were chosen from the students' works for the previous year. This was investigation, part of the investigation. They uh, took it from the interview and made it after the interview of the clients. Okay, let's see another one. Okay, data flow diagram. So this is very important part. And also in a program of 12th grade and 11, you can see that DFD is an individual part of analysis. If any DFD consists of four main elements, entity, process, data store or store sometimes, and data flow. And they have these symbols. This ellipse, this rectangle, this kind of rectangle, and the arrow. So uh, there are a lot of different uh, types of DFDs, but usually we choose gain Sarson model, and it has the main shapes like that you can see on the screen. Okay, so let's discuss the first one: entity. Entity uh, is usually show the process. Sorry, sorry, external entity we call it. It generally shows all the people or objects that involve to the system. It may also indicate the other external systems that you are interacting with. So it can be, uh, if you discuss, for example, government, uh, government can be external entity. If you um, describing the DVD of school, for example, yeah, like a whole process, you can see that uh, external entities can be like students, teachers, staff, etc. Everyone who involved and who makes some processes in the system. Next one is process. Process describes the processing that happens to the data as it's moved from one location to another. It has data inputted and will output the data another process or entity. Actually, in the DFD, the main element is process. So process can interact with any other elements in the DFD. Any external entity should come firstly to the process and then goes to another one, to another entity or another process as well. Next one is store or sometimes as i said is data store generally this indicates different computational models uh, stores used to hold your data such as hard disk files databases cd rooms etc so what is a data store everyone knows what data store mean it's just like a warehouse where you can hold your data temporary or for a long time so and the last one is data flow this show you how data moves from one part to another in the system. You need to uh, label the arrows to explain exactly what they're moving about. Sometimes, uh, in my practice, I mean, that some students draw their DVDs without, they just draw it, very nice, they use all of these four different shapes, but they do not label the arrows, the data flow. This is very important. Students need to always label it, because if they don't do it, uh, you can never understand what happens in this process and what kind of data flows around the system. And student, it means that students have no clear idea, that's why he didn't put it. Also, the DVD has some specific rules. It means that only data processes on the process can interact with each other directly. But other any symbols like uh, entity and data store should interact only by the process. So you can go directly from the external entity to the data store. You always need to follow the process and you should give a special name for this process. If you're talking about DVD, let me say that DVD also has several levels. The first one, 
Uh, it's called flat DVD. Sometimes we call it like flat file, flat DVD, or DVD of level zero. This means that it's very general, general picture, general structure of the process. It's not detailed. It's just simple picture. Like even a child can draw, draw you and explain the DVD of level zero. But if you like to make it more deeper, uh, more detailed, you need to go exactly uh, to the process, to the main process of your DVD, and split it on other small processes, and then write a DVDs for these processes for each, and then to make uh, put them all together in one big DVD. This gives you a DVD level one. Okay, so etc. So you can also give a DVD level two, etc. So more deeper and more detailed and help you to solve your problem. Okay, now a little task. So now please, can you create a DVD for the following scenarios? The first one, let's look on the course registration. Second one is online order system. And the last one is quiz software. You should use these four different elements and try to draw for these scenarios. Choose the best that you like and try to make it. Oh, sorry, I just forgot. Uh, create the DVD level zero yeah, for the beginning. Let's say I give you five minutes to do this because it's take thorough analysis. Okay, I think that you already finished the first one. Let's have a look to the right answer. So this is the data flow diagram for the course registration. Um, this is looks like not like a gains are solved model, but let me explain. This one in a green color, this is an external entity. Yeah, it's already taken here. In the blue color, we can see database. Okay, and here we can see two different processes. Check course availability and check applicant qualification. And also we have different data flows in here. So let's look and try to understand what happens. This is a course registration. So external entity like it can be a student or any person who go who also interested in the course would like to register. He give an application to the check course availability and then it goes to the database like inquire and reply. So database give a reply to this process and then about uh, applications come here in this database. Then again <coughs> the data process between these two components and then finally it will be given response to the external entity. So is it succeed or not? Like accept or declare this application. Okay. Next scenario, online order system. I think sometimes students like this kind of topic, online ordering system. They usually do it via the websites. So that's why it's a very actual thing. Let's look on this example. Okay, this like looks more like against our own model, yes. We have two different external entities, customer and credit card company. We have two different databases, database one, data store two, customer database and inventory. Also, we have a process order. We have verify credit card and we have ship order processes. And a lot of, a lot of different data flows. So let's look, customer, he gives an order to the process order process and then the customer and all the information goes to the customer database and will save in this database via this process and then it gives the acknowledgement to the customer and says okay then after the information goes from database to the verified credit card so credit company credit company approval or rejection gives an answer to this process and then comes the response to this externality like credit card number and order amount so like asking this kind of things Shipping order. Uh, this is about the shipping the product, delivering to the customer. Inventory, we have a database inventory, product type and amount, asking here, is it available or not? So, and the response gives to the customer information and delivery database, data, or here, or information. So this process mm, related to the online ordering system. So students can modify it or can use this uh, this DVD for their projects. And what was the last one? It was the quiz software. The quiz software. Let's look on it. Okay, again, not gains are some model. Student is external entity. 
questions, student answer and correct answer supposed to be the database. And we have three different processes, like generate questions, record answers, and evaluate answers. Students uh, would like to go to the generation, uh, generate questions to this process, and question comes to here, uh, question. Students will receive this uh, question from the database. Okay. Then students try to give an answer to this question, choose an answer, and comes here to record answers. And answers was uh, sent to the students, answer database, and will saved here. Then answer goes ne to the next process called evaluate answer. So we need to decide and see uh, is the answer correct or not correct. Also, we have database with correct answers. And this comes here, students' answers, and the actual answer for this question is going to check here, and the system is going to decide is it was it correct or not, and then send the feedback <coughs> to the students, so students can see. Actually, it happens during the few seconds, but in detail, you can see that this is a very staged process uh, with three different databases, with one external entity, and three different processes, very logically constructed. Okay. So, which else? Ah, this is a DVD level one. And the previous examples were also related to DVD level one, because it's not like a flat file, flat simple diagram. It's more detailed, and the process was the main process was divided on two or more smaller processes. Okay. Now this was taken this example of DVD from the coursework of student from this year. It is very very detailed. I think this uh, this student is developing the website um, for selling. I don't know, it's online shop, I think. Yes, it's online shop. You can see different external entities like in the administration, supplier, customer, office, employer, cell comfort, etc. Here you can see the database. This is a database. Information about previous places, information about workers, information about products, etc. So this is very detailed and planned DVD. So administration also. The only problem with this DVD, you easily can find it. Data flow is not labeled some way. Here is okay, but in here not. But generally, you can see that students have a clear idea what he's doing, in which way he's going to solve the problem. And in this DFD, student can see that, you know, where is the weaknesses of this problem, of this system, where are the strengths. And after the, he decides, he can make his own choice, finish the project. Okay. Next, we have alternative solutions. Uh, last year, looking on the coursework example, we thought only about three different uh, alternative solutions that uh, you can choose. But actually, you can choose a lot of them. The first one, like this suggestion, only suggestion. I, I didn't say that you should also follow this structure, but it's very good, good one and gives you more marks if you do it like this. So try to use at least one computer-based and at least one non-computer-based. Try to think about this, or if you can think a mm, little bit more about it, it's better for you, for your coursework. So with your client, you need to discuss all the alternative solutions, possible ways, how you are going to solve mm, the problem that you identified already. Uh, why it's better to uh, have at least one computer-based? So in different areas, is it computer-based, it means that machine is going to solve this problem, or maybe uh, you're going to create some software, or maybe you would like to buy some software. At least one on computer based, it means, again, if it's not computer based, it's paper based. Or anyway, you should write somewhere. And you di should discuss all these pros and cons of the two different sides of these solutions. Okay? This example was taken from students' work. Mm. Let's look. The first one is buying off the shelf or existing software. The second one is improving the current software and creating a new software. So this looks like if you go to the previous slide, you can see that all of them are computer based. Not bad. And what did the student say about this? The first one, buying off the shelf software, he said such approach will not be very expensive and moreover, the client can be sure that the system will work since it's downloaded. However, it may be really difficult to find a system which will meet all the requirements of the client as a process of flat rental. 
is a quite different from uh, other types of businesses. Yeah, so you didn't give a thorough analysis of this way of solving. He said, he mentioned the advantages, he also mentioned the drawbacks of the current method. Then he gives the second one, to improving the current software that already exists. Uh, maybe one of the ways of making a new system as it's much cheaper than making a completely new system. Absolutely, yeah, that's right. The problem which, uh, with such approach is that where there was no any computer system which allowed the owner to keep track of all the recording. It was completely the work of the client with all the data and information written by hand. So students discuss improving the current software, uh, as the current software yeah. and the system that the uh, client is using now is more paper-based. This again has a lot of drawbacks. And uh, finally, student mentioned about creating new software. The, there were two approaches discussed with the client. One of them was a database which allows the user to keep track of all the records. However, it still found a little bit me messy. The, therefore, another approach was agreed. Okay, this again, the computer-based solution calls students uh, give an advent, uh, give an advice of creating a new package, a new software that not already exists to make it on special software, etc. So, this also can be as <coughs> accepted. After you discuss uh, all the alternative solutions with the clients, finally you need to decide which one is the best one, or maybe which, which one has the least drawbacks in comparing with other methods. And finally, when you stop your choice, you should choose it and create an application. Okay, carry on. Okay, plenary. Okay, we reached the final stage of our lesson. This is the plenary. You need to mention always and always say to your students because uh, sometimes last year we have some problems. The students put the, all the desirable things for desirable system. They put it in the investigation part. No, here you should put only the things that are related to the current system. Yes, not for the new one. And let's check that analysis can be done by, again, interview, interview, you remember that we said that interview is uh, going to is very useful when you have only one or two clients and then people who are uh, supposed to be your client. Second one is questionnaire. We said if you have more than two different users or clients, it's better to make a questionnaire to obtain information from them to make to find uh, the weaknesses and the strengths of the system. And then we, we said that uh, analysis can be done by observation of the current system. The stages that well, makes observation of the system is a flowchart, DFD, data capture method, alternative solutions, etc. So now I would like you uh, to say what new things did you find on this lesson? They are here in the plenary, but if you would like to add something more, feel free to do it. I think my lesson will help the students in the future, maybe not this year, because this year for the moment they already finished uh, the most part of their projects. Now they are doing the programming, for example, or some of them doing the evaluation part. Anyway, for the future year students that will come to the grade 12 next year, it will be very crucial uh, supporting this kind of lesson from the very beginning of the project till the end, finally, because this part gives them mostly uh, a lot of marks. It gives, um, I think, 11 out of 60 marks. It's not too little. It's quite, quite okay, yeah? rather. <clears throat> so thank you very much for participating in my lesson. Next week, I think I have another one.